Okay, here's the DO7E and I want to install this module also. It's the NRF24L01 with its antenna. Okay, so let's take apart the radio. Let's remove the battery first. Currently it uses a LiPo. Then remove these rubber elements. There's a small hole here. Remove the other one. Okay, now we have five screws. One, two, three, four and five. Remove those also. You'll need a key, something like this. Five screws were removed. Now remove the side also. You also have this cut in it. Now it should come apart, as you can see. Now handle it with care. First unplug the two wires. We will work on this area. This small unit has to be connected to these pins down here. Okay, after this, go to this webpage, hexmods.com and search for NRF24L01. On this page, you have the color coding. So for example, what you see here, this black dark thing, that's the NRF. It's not exactly the same. There's only one yellow thing here on the left side. This one has three of them. Okay, but these color-coded things are the pins themselves. So the top left on the NRF module goes to there, to the right side. So top left to right side. Top left of this one, of the module, goes to the right side of this one. So this is the hardware part, the wires are soldered, I joined two of them there because the red and the pink on the instructions were common, the antenna is connected and I made a hole up here. Ok and the circuit board, this one will be inserted somewhere here because the back plate has this large part and that will press here in the middle it will press everything down I should cover these connections, these pins so it, they won't make short circuit inside on those metal components Now hold down the EXT button on the radio, EXT and push up the power button, it says program update, ok release the button, now connect a USB cable to the computer and the mini USB should be introduced here into the side of the Devo 7E. Ok now let's go to file explorer right click this computer and go to properties ok and here in device manager stm32 is here now let's right click on this one and update driver 
browse to a location. Let's go to this folder, DFU USB driver. So let's go to browse here on the desktop, DFU USB DRV driver. OK. Next. Has finished successfully. OK. Now the error is, the warning is gone. So the driver is installed. Now let's go back to the Diffuse program. Now STM is available here before it was blank. OK, let's go to the three dots. And from the deviation Devo 7050 folder, load the DFU file. Open it. Now upgrade is available. Click on the upgrade button. Your device was plugged in in DFU mode. Continue. Just click yes. Firmware is upgrading. Nothing is visible on the LCD screen of the transmitter. It was erasing. Now it's downloading. OK, upgrade successful. Now we can close the program. Click on the quit button. And on the transmitter, power it off, like so. Now hold down the ENT button, ENT, and then power it on. OK, now it says you need to format a drive before you can use it. So if I open a file explorer window, I have a new removable disk, so format it, format disk, leave the defaults, let's call it Devo 70 and make sure quick format is checked and click on start, yes, click OK to format it. Now it's formatting that 2 megabyte drive of the Devo 70, OK, format complete, close it. Close the format window. Now let's go to Devo 7e. Let's check it out here at properties. So it's a 2 megabyte fat partition and it's completely empty. Now let's go to the deviation Devo 7e 5.0 folder. Okay, and select everything from this folder except the debug file. Hold down the control key and then you can deselect it. Debug and the DFU extension file. OK, and just right click on it and copy. And go to the 2 megabyte partition, right click and paste. OK, copying finished. And here on the Devo 70 small partition, Open up this file, hardware.ini, right click on it, open with, and try with workpad. We have these modules here, and nrf is the one that we need. So to enable it, just remove the semicolon, this one, which is in front of these two lines, which contain nrf. So remove this semicolon and the other one. OK, now it has a number A14. And let's check that one. So here on the hex mods page, the black one is the NRF module. If you connected the yellow one, CSN, if you connected that one to this yellow one, which is called TMS, then you should type in A13. I did that one, so I should type in A13. If you connected the yellow CSN to the next one, TCK, then you should type in A14. So let's go there. Instead of 14, type in 13. A13 is here also, but that has a semicolon, so that one is disabled. OK, let's save this file and close it. 
Now let's power it off. Back on. Now we have the deviation logo. We can remove the cable also. Okay, now here's the Saima X5C. We power it on. It's flashing quickly. Now it's blinking slower. Okay, so power on the transmitter. I already named it Saima X5C. So let's start from the beginning, almost from the beginning. So enter button to enter into the menu. Model menu the same button enter there model setup enter with the same button and here we have file and load up and down is on this side as you can see okay if you enter this load then here are the models if you go to a blank one let's say that one and enter there then you can set up another quadcopter for example back to load let's customize the Saima okay so we are on the Saima I created that one model name you have to enter the name here use all these keys and at the end go to done and it will save that name so Saima was written by me it was not there Icon doesn't matter. We have the default one, heli, multi, and plane. Let's select multi. Okay, model type, plane, multi, and heli. So this is a multi copter. Let's use that one. Transmitter power. Here I can't modify it. Somewhere I could modify it. The milliwatts of the transmitter. Okay, ppm. I'm not sure about that. Now this one, none, none, that is very important, use the up or down keys and search for something Saima related and then we should bind it, Saima, okay Saima X, okay now let's go to re in it, down and enter into that one, re in it and it's not blinking anymore I modified the sound a little bit so it's not that noisy right now okay and it is already working so I can get out from the menu and it's working there's a slight problem I have to adjust it it's constantly turning a little bit to the it's yawing to the left I have to adjust it from somewhere, it's not working from this one. So it's turned all the way to the right, but it's still turning a little bit to the left. Okay, now let's turn it off. It starts blinking. Binding Saima, and it's working. By the way, if I use this radio, the Saima is constantly turning, yawing to the left a little bit, it's not yet adjusted. But if I use its own radio, then it's working perfectly, so it's not yawing to the left. So this needs some adjustments. Okay, another thing, if I install deviation on this one, now my other quadcopter is not binding, so I have to find out on that one. Maybe I should use the bind plug and do some tuning here and then it should work this with this one also.